A bipartisan group of senators is negotiating legislation that would impose sanctions on Russia to deter the country from invading Ukraine. Joining us now, two members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. We'll get to Senator Ben Cardin in just a moment. We begin with Republican Senator John Barrasso. Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Good to have you with us. Uh, all of the senators received a closed-door intel briefing at the end of last week. And there are quite uh, startling figures and news coming out of that. One is from the Joint Chiefs Chair Mark Milley, who said that it's possible that Kabul could fall inside of 72 hours. What was your reaction when you came out of that briefing in terms of where this is headed? Well, first, let me just say the picture that really tells the story is that picture from the Olympics of Putin and Xi, because Putin is the clear and present danger, and she is the long-term threat. And to see the two of them standing in solidarity and seeming to be eager to double-team America is going to be a real test of President Biden's resolve. So the question now comes down to Putin and does he or doesn't he? It's not can he or can't he. He certainly has the potential to do this if he decides to move. I think it's incumbent upon us to do everything we can to discourage that action. But ultimately, he's going to make that decision by himself. It became clear to me from the briefing that he's not going to take input from others. He is a predator. He's going to see what it costs him and what he gets. And if we put biting sanctions in place right now, without delay, before an attack, then those will be financial, as well as make sure Ukraine has the weapons that they need to defend themselves. That's not U.S. troops. That's Ukraine defending themselves with first-class weapons, then that will make Putin think twice. So if Putin rolls in, um, you know, I mean, the question is going to become, what do we do? You know, do you see something happening here that's a, some sort of arms agreement that allows Putin to be in Ukraine and then sort of take some of the some arms off the table. I mean, you, you heard, I hope, Jake Sullivan moments ago. And there there's a commitment to put troops in the region, but not in Ukraine, which I think a lot of people agree with. I know your your colleague Josh Hawley uh, agrees with that. But how far are we willing to go is the question. Yeah, I think Putin hasn't made his final decision yet. I think you're 100 percent right. He does use energy as a weapon. And we can talk more about that. But we ought to have biting sanctions in place now, not later. We have a bipartisan piece of legislation uh, that I've, we've been working on. And I'll tell you, what is happening now is the administration has been weak-kneed on this. They've been dragging their feet. They want Democrats to water it down. We need pressing biting sanctions now, not after an invasion. What Putin is talking about has been putting together the old Soviet Union. Ukraine is the first part of that. He, he wants to swallow the whole thing, and it's about, it is the second largest country in Europe. We need to prevent that through letting him know that it's going to be very painful if he tries to do it. If he gets away with it, that's the bigger problem. He needs to choke on trying to swallow Ukraine, because if it's easy pickings for him, my worry is that then China moves against Taiwan and Iran moves quickly to a nuclear weapon. Scary scenario. Um, I want to switch gears with you for a moment, Senator, if I might. This is a clip of the former Vice President Mike Pence at a speech that he gave at the Federalist Society on Friday with regard to January 6th and his role. Here it is. I heard this week that President Trump said I had the right to overturn the election. But President Trump is wrong. I had no right to overturn the election. The presidency belongs to the American people and the American people alone. Do you agree with Mike Pence on that, sir? You know, I voted to certify the election, and I think Mike Pence did his constitutional duty that day. It's, it's not the Congress that elects a president. It's the American people. But I tell you, President Trump and Mike Pence did remarkable things for this country, and I hope they can work out their differences. We are better as a party when we're unified, and we are united, certainly here in Wyoming, about what this current administration is doing with regard to high prices, inflation, an open border, crime in the cities. People of Wyoming are fed up, as they are all across the country, with what's happening today. And my focus is on the future, taking back the House, taking back the Senate, the 2022 elections, not the 2020 elections. So you agree, but do you agree with Mike Pence, because you did vote to certify that he did not have the power to overturn the election? 
I voted to certify the elections. I will tell you, I've been at 15 events in Wyoming in the last week. Last night, 800 people at a Boys and Girls Club dinner. This never comes up. People are really concerned about empty shelves at the grocery store, high prices, a dollar a gallon, higher price for gasoline, an open Absolutely. southern border with criminals, all of these people coming across, crime in the cities. People in Wyoming want me to focus on the future, not the past. That is Understood. where I am focusing yeah, we, we all know of that, my that, attention. That is where their priorities are. I just want to ask you, because she is a Wyoming colleague of yours, your reaction to the censure of Liz Cheney um, by the RNC. You know, many of our county parties have already done that in Wyoming. The state party has done it as well. You know, Liz and I disagree. I voted against the January 6th commission, voted uh, against impeachment twice. We're going to have a very spirited primary uh, here. It's a late primary, late August uh, here in Wyoming. Uh, that is going to be very engaging, I can tell you. And uh, Liz is going to have to travel the state and make her case to the voters of Wyoming if she intends to get reelected. Senator Brasso, thank you very much, as always, for your time. Good to see you today. Thank you, Martha.